De Bruyne. This has come through to Raheem Sterling, who rifles the champions ahead. Here is Morris. He's got away from Luis, who shoved him back. He's given him a red card, Peter. De Bruyne with absolute certainty. And there goes Aguero. And in comes Foden. And Manchester City are 3-0 to the good. So three goals and three points to restart for Manchester City. Let's hear from the man who began it all in the first half, Raheem Stel. Raheem, after all the apprehension and the uncertainty, how good a return to action was that? Yeah, um, you know, it's been a confusing last couple of weeks. Um, no one knew quite where we was at. So, you know, we were all buzzing to be back here at the stadium on our home turf and, and putting a good performance. Obviously, the result speaks for itself, but how did you find it with the very different circumstances? Yeah, we expected it to be weird, but the message since we came back from, um, you know, the little break we had was, you know, we've got to find something within ourselves, dig deep, and, you know, I thought the boys um, kept their composure and um, fought to the end. Did you think you found your rhythm after about 10, 15 minutes and then really dominated the game in the first half from then on? Yeah, I think the first 10 was, you know, kind of getting used to this atmosphere and getting the cobwebs off, but. After that, I thought we controlled the game well and um, we took our chance as well. What does it mean, first goal in the calendar year for you? Yeah, um, you know, it's something, you know, beat myself up about, but I knew um, at some point I'll get an opportunity, I just needed to take it, and uh, that's what I've done today. Was that strange, the celebration? Because obviously you've got to try and social distance. Yeah, no, I think um, we've got to remain, um, you know, with all the safety tips, but at the same time, it's football, and, you know, uh, in the last couple of days, all the boys have, you know, tested negative, so. Um, I think we, we celebrated in the right manner. We weren't too close, but, you know, little fist bumps um, can't hurt anyone. Also, of course, before the game, another very powerful message as all players took the knee. Tell us the thoughts behind that and what you're hoping that type of gesture can achieve. Uh, I just um, see it as a, you know, a massive step for the Premier League to allow um, something like that to happen. Um, it shows we're going in the right direction and, you know, Little by little, we, we're seeing, you know, change, and that's what everyone's hoping for, not just black players, every, I think, the majority of the country, so it was great to see. How did it evolve? Um, I think it's just natural. I think it's organic. I think that's the most important thing, you know, we've seen other teams do it and um, early, in, earlier kick-off, and um, I think it's something that we thought we had to do as well. Eric Garcia, obviously, a horrible injury. You were out on the pitch. You couldn't get too close, but how did he look to you, or how did he seem? Um, you know, Eric had a fantastic game. He came in and fitted in really well, composed. And, you know, it was sad to see him go off like that. But um, you know, seeing him on the pitch at first, he looked pretty bad. But after a little bit, he, he looked looked himself a little bit. But you know, only time will tell. Well, our thoughts and best wishes are with uh, Eric Garcia. Just his second ever Premier League start. It was some blow that he took as well, Michael, wasn't it? Yeah, the momentum of the goalkeeper coming towards him as well. It's almost like a, you know, doubles the speed, doesn't it, when yeah. you when you're running one way and the goalkeeper's running the other. Um, you know, the goalkeeper wins the ball at he, he wins the ball properly, and, and it's just a, it's it's one of those things, isn't it? You can't do much about it, I, I guess. Um, and I just hope the young lad's all right because he played particularly well today. It's a position that he could make his own. You know, it's a, there's a gap there, isn't there, to play alongside Laporte. Um, that's a sad sight, but hopefully he's back on his feet soon. Yeah, I'll just echo what Michael said there. You know, the goalkeeper who was, again, Edison, was brilliant today. Um, and his starting position, you can see there, um, and the, his commitment um, was evident to see. You know, he, he, all he saw was the ball coming through and he went to win it. Um, and you listen to what, Ra what Raheem said there, Raheem Sterling said there, he says they've all had to find it. You know, the managers asked them for that, the commitment to raise your game, to go for it. And the goalkeeper looked to me like it, it didn't make no difference he's playing in front of no people or mm. 100,000 people. He went for a ball that he thought he, he, he should win and he did. And unfortunately, Garcia got the bad end of it. But um, I'm sure he'll be fine. Let's hope so. Um, Raheem Sterling talking about the fact that he knew he'd score eventually in this calendar year. <laughs> uh, he set them on their way with a helping hand. Certainly a helping hand, yeah, David Lewis. Turn away now. Um, you get he gets so much time there to actually get his body between the ball. But just look at the uh, 
uh, Raheem Sterling there. We highlighted him in his run. It's a good run. It's a well-timed run. He stays on side and then he picks the perfect finish. As I say, even though he's only close, I think you've got to go high in that situation. And, uh, and Leno had a fantastic game, but he couldn't do anything about that. It was a sweet strike from Sterling and broke the deadlock. David Luiz had 25 minutes, pretty forgettable minutes on the pitch. Yeah, he did. Um, and it's unfortunate because, like I say, he's a very... He's a very good pro. He's very good in the dressing room, but he does tend to have days of magnificence and some days of, of real um, poor um, performances. And unfortunately, today, 25 minutes he had really cost Arsenal simply because I thought they were doing well to hang in. There's a little bit of um, play that was going on that could have caused Man City's problems. It didn't, but here, he's got himself too close. I think you have to give Mares um, credit for that chest, getting himself in that position. But then David Luiz is too close. He's, and now he's in trouble. He's reaching, he's grabbing, and he's pulling there. And, you know, the referee's got a very good look of it, look at it. And, you know, he's, he's sent him off as well. So double the jeopardy for Arsenal. And I didn't think he was going to miss. It's surprising that he hasn't been taking him. Um, but, like, him from 12 yards, I just... As good as the goalkeeper was playing, I didn't think he was going to get near that one, and he didn't, unfortunately. Mm. And when you're 10 men away at a team like Manchester City, <coughs> the way they were knocking it around, it's a nightmare scenario for Arsenal, oh, isn't it? The worst. The worst. I think the only good thing for them is there was no fans there watching because you, you end up looking at the clock thinking, quick, tick along and, and let's get back home because you've got no chance. You know, you're playing against a brilliant team like Manchester City and you're 2 0 down at the time. And then this was the icing on the cake. And we just highlight here, look at the amount of men that Arsenal had back. And the fewer, you know, there's only two Manchester City players in this attack. Of course, Phil Foden joins at the end. But, you know, you just, you wonder how you can't mark two players. You wonder how they don't even get a touch on the ball by the time it ends up <coughs> in the back of the net. And yeah, it wasn't Arsenal's night today. They showed glimpses in the first half, but Man City were by far the best team. Even there, you see the goalkeeper got a a little touch on Aguero, touched it onto the post, but Phil Foden done well to follow that in, but I can't stress enough how great Leno was tonight. Great, brilliant he was. I'm going to talk to our good friend, uh, your former teammate, Arsenal title winner, Lee Dixon now, who's uh, been watching that. Painful watch for you as well, Lee? That's why I'm sitting in a darkened room. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to that point now. Um, yeah, he, he was disappointing after it. Uh, you know, a reasonably bright start. I thought they started the game quite well. They, they changed the lineup a little bit and it was fresh and there was a bit of energy in there. Um, and then Ketia caused a few problems in the first five, ten minutes. But then once City found their passing and, and they started to find some space in the really dangerous areas, their midfield is just an absolute joke. I mean, how, how do you get close to them? They've got so many options in midfield. I think that was the biggest thing that stood out for me today was the two differences in the midfield and, and how City make it so easy. So many options on the ball. Um, and De Bruyne is, you know, he's world-class and, uh, and, he's, and he's got two or three world-class players around him in that midfield area. So it was men against boys, it really was. And if you're going to stand a chance against City, you've got, firstly, you've got to play really well. You've got to hope they don't play so well. Um, and you've got to keep, you know, all, all your men on the pitch. And unfortunately, with David Luiz, there's always a chance of him either making a mistake or getting himself sent off. And he, he, he did double tonight. So uh, it was a poor night in the end for Arsenal, but City were brilliant. Lee, I was going to ask you, obviously, a defender that made very few um, mistakes during their career. What do you do as a manager if you've got a, a defender like David Luiz that just constantly makes mistakes? Of course, we, we know how good a player he is. He's brilliant on the ball. Yeah. He's got a bit of pace and strength. But can you just brush those to the side or do you just have to make a change eventually? Yeah, no, you sell him or give him away. I mean, it's, it's, it's gone on too long and, I, and I'm not, nothing personal against David Luiz. Um, but I, I've, we've all watched the mistakes he makes. Um, I'm never, even when he's playing really well and he seems in control of the game and he's in, you know, especially at home, he's got that lovely language style about him that he, and he finds his passing. I always think, any moment now. And it must be an absolute dream to play against. I mean, Wrighty, 
would he would play he was playing him all day. He would stand in the certain areas and make him uncomfortable. And even if he didn't get a kick right, he'd know that he'd get one chance. And 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 Ian and yourself, Michael, would probably score that chance. So as a striker playing against him, doesn't matter how, how bad you're playing or how well he's playing, you're always you're always in the game because you get you fancy a chance that he's going to give you something. What would you do with him, Lisa? Sell him, give him away? <laughs> well, I think Dicko's, you know, playing in front of Dicko and the guys for so many years and they didn't make mistakes like that. Never, never saw anything. I'd love to say that Martin Keown did just so as he can wind him up, but not even he made <laughs> many mistakes. But yeah, you, you think at this stage of David Luiz's career and where Arsenal are going is unfortunately, unfortunate for Pablo Mari tonight, but I probably have to agree with Dicko there. You know, it's maybe it might be time unfortunately for David Luiz, because he is apparently very good in the dressing room. He's got a lot of experience, but I think what we saw with quite a, a young team, um, you know, an experienced player like that making those mistakes, it literally drained them. And you can see after a while, Man City are going to get in control and you, you really have an uphill task after that. So I'll probably go with what Dicko said there. See what it is, Steve. He, mm. um, he, puts, yes. he puts himself in a position like that, that that goal there and the pe giving the penalty away because he makes rash decisions. He, he, he's got a good footballing brain, but he makes rash decisions, goes in too early. And then once he goes in, he knows then he's made a mistake. And then the, the next one is a catch up. And it, invariably, because of the quality of the strikers in the Premier League, that catch up is a foul or it's a, you know, it's a second mistake. So th that's where his trouble lies, but it's his first initial decision making. Okay. Uh, more from Lee in a moment, and uh, Ian and Michael as well. But we can now get the thoughts of the Manchester City boss, Pep Guardiola. Pep, apart from the injury to Eric Garcia, was that everything you wanted tonight? Yeah, we are a little bit concerned. Uh, he responds quite well, but uh, we have to wait. What's going to happen next hours about uh, Eric? But yeah, of course, it's the first game. You never know what's going to happen for the fact that a long time without playing and the first days to see, but a part of Eric, no injuries and and, uh, and in some moments we'll be good. How bad is Eric Garcia? Is he conscious? Is he going to hospital? He's conscious right now. He's conscious, that is a good sign, but I think he's going to to, to make a, an extra test, an extra, maybe in hospital. There were many questions before the game as to what would it be like. What did you learn from tonight? What questions for you were answered? Well, in the beginning, uh, it was a lot of energy. We knew it. Everybody wants to know after three months off, and and it was not uh, not quiet. And we had after 20 minutes, we we had chances because we we had. Um, and after we scored uh, two goals, it was important to score before the half time our goal. And in the second one, uh, and the penalty and sent off, okay, the situation is, is completely different for the fact that, uh, that Arsenal played 10 against 11. And, but in general, after that, I cannot say anything else than be happy about, about the performance for the team and everyone. And, and uh, I, I see in a good shape the team, and that is a good signal for, for the next games. Yeah, and of course, um... Those games, not only in the Premier League, but uh, they're, they're really going to keep in shape, Lee, for those Champions League eventually and FA Cup matches, which are which are huge for City this season. Yeah, and I think he's you know he's got the players at his disposal to be able to chop around the side. A, a really good friend of mine who's a, a City fan texted me when the team came out saying, "Oh, he's playing the reserves. He's concentrating on the <laughs> on the big games." Well, if, if that's their reserves, then we're in big trouble because. <laughs> You know, they were absolutely brilliant tonight. And um, and he's got those options, you know, he, Foden coming on and looking live wire. He's, I'm sure he'll get a run in, in the next few weeks as well. So they've got options all over the pitch and um, and they, they are really strong. It just shows you how strong Liverpool are, the fact that they, they walk in the league and City are, are trailing in their way. Yeah, I mean, for City, the, the, the season is... It, it's funny because a lot of people look at Liverpool and, and say, oh, the pressure's on them and all and things like that. I think Liverpool must be the most relaxed team in that they only have to just stumble over the line if they wanted to. And that's it. Their season's pretty much done after that. Whereas City, they've got to be coming out the traps fire and they've got the two competitions that you mentioned, Steve, and then obviously the Premier League as well. So City have got to rotate their squad. They've got to, uh, got to hit the ground running. 
I think Liverpool are probably the most relaxed uh, dressing room in the in the country at the moment. You know, another one one or two wins and, and it's all over. Absolutely. Um, Lee, we've seen... Uh, great to see two games uh, back tonight, but we've seen two uh, games start with some remarkable solidarity and, and support. Uh, first of all, at, at the Etihad uh, following on, we heard from Raheem Sterling there as well. I mean, how pleased are you to see this kind of player support at the moment? Yeah, I mean, it's fantastic. It took me by surprise a little bit in the first game. And once it, it was so powerful when it happened, I was like, wow. You know, it was just the way it happened um, and the, all the players and the officials and everybody surrounding the, the pitch. It was just a brilliant, powerful message. And that's what it's got to be. Raheem Sterling talking about, um, you know, <laughs> people are, have had enough and it's time for change. And we need to make we, action speaks louder than words. And we've talked about this before when racism's cropped up in the game and two or three days or a week later, we kind of back to our normal lives. Well, that can't go on. We've got to make a stance. And I think that was a, a, a brilliant gesture. Well said. And in terms of the action, as I say, there were no goals, but there should have been. And how much sympathy do you have for Chris Wilder tonight, Lee? I want to know who's in charge of the batteries of the watch. Somebody's going to get a right telling off for that. I mean... When when he looks at his watch, the referee, I mean, he was just so far over the line. I, the first time I saw it, I was doing some interviews and I, and I sort of went, oh, he must have given a foul. There must have been something that I didn't see. Because it's actually behind the post. I think this is the angle that we see it behind the post. Oh. There. I mean, oh. his, his arm's in between <laughs> the ball and the post. And then he sort of thinks, oh, he's not give it. I'll try and sort of take it the other side of the post. I mean, that oh, is just unbelievable, isn't it? But, you know, the apology's been been issued, um, how the, the amount of cameras missed that is it's just one of those moments. Um, and I, 9,000 odd games or whatever it is, it's, it's never happened before. And he's looking down, and it's just, it's comedy, but it's, it's shocking for Sheffield United. I mean, they, they must be heartbroken with that. Indeed. Lee, as always, great to talk to you. Thank you very much indeed. Good to see you. Cheers, guys. Thanks. Nice one, Moses. Uh, statement from Hawkeye uh, to give you after that game at Villa Park that uh, Lee was uh, talking about there. It says this, the seven cameras located in the stands around the goal area were significantly occluded by the goalkeeper, defender and goalpost. This level of occlusion has never been seen before in over 9,000 matches that the Hawkeye goal line technology system has been in operation. The system has remained functional throughout. Hawkeye unreservedly apologises to the Premier League, Sheffield United and everyone affected by this incident. Let's get some reaction then from Villa Park, from the managers. I think we all had the feel, uh, both sets of players, both sets of staff. I think even speaking to the referee and, and Chris Kavanagh, who was a fourth official, he had the feel of a, of, of, of a goal. And, um, and obviously, um, quickly relayed back to us. I think the goalkeeper at the time, I think he was in the alt end when he, when he caught it or dragged it back. Um, 